I'm John Rogers, I'm a writer and a filmmaker and um, today we're out uh, in Hertfordshire just north of um, Ware on the edge of Cold Christmas Lane. Is it Cold Christmas Lane? It is Cold Christmas Lane. And we're going to walk up the section of Ermine Street from here to Puckeridge. So I'm walking along um, a, a short section of Ermine Street for a brilliant project called um, Ermine Street Live. Simon's one of the co-creators of that here. Hello, hello. And so I'm one of how many authors are doing it? Uh, about 18 authors, 18. all of different calibers and strengths. Yeah. This one's, I mean, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and this is uh, day seven from, and we're going from Coral Christmas Lane to Puckeridge. Which takes us through really interesting terrain. It takes us through Thundridge within the orbit of the Youngsbury burial mounds, which I visited before, which are Romano British burials that are excavated um, in the late uh, 19th century, but they'd, uh, they'd been plundered before that. But they did find. Uh, a wonderful Romano-British burial urn, a cremation urn. It's an intriguing burial, that. And then we're going to go um, along Ermine Street up to Puckeridge. And there are, um, and Puckeridge is right on the edge of, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Brofing, Brafing, Brofing, which was a Roman town. So it's, um, it's not just the walk along Ermine Street, it's a, it's a walk where there are physical remains. And, the, and there were Roman buildings up near Youngsbury as well. I have not walked this part of Irma Street. I've walked up the hills over there to the Youngsbury Burial Mounds, but I've never been to Puckeridge. I've been meaning to go there for ages. Today's the day. I'm just going to go for a look at St Mary's Church, Thunderidge. I don't know how old this church is. I don't think this is that old because um, over there. <laughs> If, you, if we went along, actually, we'll see soon actually, a little section of road called Ermine Street. And that goes in the direction of, uh, I think it's called All Saints Church, Thundridge. The original parish church is actually just in the middle of the fields over there. And it's derelict, it's ruined. And it was um, sort of demolished in, 18, in the 1850s, which is when I think this was built to replace it. And that church, all that remains now is the kind of the footprint of the body of the church. But the tower is still there, just really in the fields, not far from the river. And it's used now a lot by ghost hunters go there. So you'll see lots of videos on YouTube of ghost hunting there. And also uh, occultists go there and perform rituals. And when I went there, there was evidence of people having performed rituals there. There was like remains of fires there and there was adorbings on the church, on the tower, on the church tower. Um, it's a really quite a sort of poignant place. And there would have been a little settlement there as well around it. Thundridge Village Hall. I, I thought it was a church, it's a lovely village hall, isn't it? And now we're actually dropping down into the valley of the River Rib. And to the right here, we have Ermine Street, actually, to the right. And this is where I walked a few years ago when I went to the Youngsbury Burial Mounds. Well, shall work. we ask ourselves that question, is that the course of the old Ermine Street or is it just an aberration? Because Roman roads were straight, so... Well, yeah, yeah, well, kind oh. of. I mean, but also what you've got down there, so if you go down there, that's where you've got the old, the old church, the ruins of the old church, more or less. It kind of aligns with it. And the Roman burial mounds are up in the hill there. Yeah. the Romano-British and the Roman buildings that are right near those burial mounds are up above the hill. That would be more to do with the fact that we're, we're dropping down into a river valley, the, river, uh, the valley of the River Rib, and you can see we're on high ground dropping right down, um, which of course the River Rib is a tributary of the Lee. So they would have chosen that high ground because it would have been dry, you know, you wouldn't... Having said that, elsewhere Roman villas are often built near rivers, so can't always say that would be the reason. So maybe the route did go slightly, you know, wouldn't, wasn't completely straight. Here, here we have Ermin's Cafe for all those hungry uh, legionnaires and centurions. Come and have a scone on their way to Lincoln and then on to York. You need a few scones to get you all the way to, to York, I would have thought. Here 
here we have the, the River Rib, a tributary of the Lee. Obviously being a big fan of the Ben uh, Aronovich books, the Rivers of London books, I always wonder what the deity of a particular river will be like. What's the deity of the Rib like? Given the presence of Ermine Street and of Roman or Romano-British burial mounds, I feel like there's some sort of link to that period, to the Iron Age. What I, um, what I really like is the idea of when, the reality of where the Roman soldiers would have come from that were stationed yeah. here. There was a Syrian division based in the, in the Lee Valley. Right. So there would have been people from Syria walking up through here. Wow. And, and the first time I walked that part of Ermin Street, back near um, Wormleybury, that kind of area, Hoddesdon, it was snowing. And I just thought of these guys from Syria in the, like, the third century, yeah. walking through a, a snowy wood in Hertfordshire. Where the <laughs> hell are we? What are we doing? What are we doing here? Where, what is this place? The Feathers Inn. It's a yeah. fine looking big old pub, isn't it? All covered in ivy. It's really nice looking. That would be great on a winter's day. Actually, I did, I did walk past here mid-winter. Yeah. Actually, I walked past. I don't remember why I didn't go in. I'm not sure if it was open. So this obelisk here it says, on this spot where stands this monument in the month of June 1785, Thomas Clarkson resolved to devote his life to bring about the abolition of the slave trade. Sits on this hill here. For a project about a road, this feels like a significant point. Home of Britain's first turnpike. And there's a sort of like heritage gate here to mark the fact. I very much doubt those posts are from the first turnpike. How much do you think it would have been? 25p. Yeah, yeah. bargain. Yeah. This stone here with high cross on it. Look, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the high cross is. I'm going to guess that it was one of the Eleanor crosses. Um, because there's one at Waltham Cross and this is a road north so it would have been here at that time. This is a marvellous old uh, roadside tavern. It looks like quite an old building due to the, the wood on the side here. It's the White Horse. It sadly looks closed. You can imagine it in its heyday. When I walked past here in the dark a few years ago, I did have sort of like fantasies about it becoming some sort of pub where folk bands come and play and reveries were held out here in the Hertfordshire countryside. some like concrete slabs here by the roadside and I was hoping when I got up to them there'd be some reason or explanation but they're kind of curious aren't they I don't think they're in any way old but I can't see why they're here I can't see what they're doing this is a great stretch of Ermine Street isn't it So it turns out it is just the High Cross yeah. cross, which I think is the Victoria the Cross. cross. The cross. So by the, got the London milestone here, London 24, Ware 3, Buntingford 7, but it's a memorial to two people, two Tottenham supporters, Matty and Adam, who died here. I guess it must have been a road traffic accident. We can actually you can. Rolling. So here's um, it's a it's a Ordnance Survey Explorer map, which are not great details for finding finding footpaths, but they do have the um, sites I'm interested in, like earthworks, 
and tumuli. And that was near the start of our walk. It's called Christmas Lane. That's the Youngsbury Mounds. And that earthwork there, I don't know what that earthwork is. It might be medieval actually. So that's High Cross, that's where we are now. And actually we're a little bit further on. So you can see we've still got a little way to go to get to um, Puckeridge. You can see look, there's a massive earthwork there. I think that's Roman actually. Again, I could be wrong. Look, Roman town, site of Roman town between Puckeridge and, and Brawfing. Brawfing? Brawfing? Who knows? So, yeah, we are. We are. Here. Oh no. Yeah. Here somewhere. Somewhere there. Somewhere. Got an abandoned roadside Indian restaurant here, the Raj Villa. Kind of would have been somebody's dream once upon a time. Now here it is, behind this wire mesh fencing with weeds growing out of the car park. Here we here we have Labden's Lane. And there's been a number of these really enticing little lanes that have led off Ermine Street. But this is the thing, when you're doing a project like this, where you're walking along a particular route, you're walking a particular road, is you have to stick to it. You know, or maybe you don't, but you know, for me, then you become, you need to, for it to work, you've got to stick to it. You've got to stick to the plan. You've got to stick to the, what they call it, constrained walk. It's called these kind of constrained walks, like river walks, and anything where you're sticking to a route. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to go back here. We can't go up Labden's Lane. We're going to stick to Ermine Street. And Puckeridge is not far away. I think this is Collier's End. And there's some really lovely old houses here. Hey, look, I don't know. I don't want to put a date on them. But I'm going to. I think they're 17th century. I think some of these. Some of them 18th century. We spoke to a lady washing her car who told us that this phone box had been adopted by passing lorry drivers as an unofficial toilet. It was now closed up. Here we go, 25 miles from London, four miles from where? If you're gonna have a Jubilee tea party, this is where I'd wanna have it. A little white bread sandwiches with Shippen's fish paste in them. Look at that. So, uh... John, just tell us about the journey so far, and if you could uh, speak out quite loudly, that would be very helpful. It's been a great journey so far, actually. It, it, we've been incredibly disciplined in sticking doggedly to the course of Ermine Street, despite the numerous temptations to, to wander off the road into the hills, which would have been full of Iceni tribes people ready to ambush us. I don't know. Maybe they were actually quite benign. But it's been great, I've really enjoyed it. What I love about this type of walk um, today is I normally walk alone actually. When I make my YouTube videos and when I write, I nearly always walk alone. And so the, the, uh, the dialogue as such is in your brain with unseen protagonists. Whereas today I've had a lot of conversation with Simon here. It's been really good because you know, walking makes your mind move in curious ways, and so the the conversation can meander in a way that this road can't. <laughs> it's a Roman road; it's very straight. It's going one place. It's headed for York, whereas our conversations have headed all over the place, really. Greenwich Meridian marker from 1984. I thought initially this was some sort of heritage item. But, well, I suppose it is it's still a heritage item. So this is still Ermine Street, but clearly, look, it's a highly modernised bit of Ermine Street as we come in to a roundabout, which obviously the Romans wouldn't have needed because their roads were all straight. So over there is the little Ermine Street sign. So this is where Ermine Street becomes the A10. 
the modern A10. Simon's there doing a bit of his filming. Symbolically, this feels like the end of something. Yeah. Well, it is really. It's the end of Ermine Street to a degree as having a separate identity from the A10. This is a bit gnarly here because they just come around that roundabout and then they're going down there at great speed and you can't see them. I'm going to make a run for it. And the car that did come around at great speed was a police car. There you go. We like the look of this public bridleway. Of course, now leaving Ermine Street for the first time absconding from the journey and the reward for dealing with the gnarly traffic is this beautiful old bridal way it's like a hollow way almost how wonderful i really love this little petrol station here it's amco but it looks like it doesn't belong to the modern world does it like you normally shell bp or whatever look it's an attended service only so they fill your car up but these Petrol pumps look really old. This is Puckeridge towards the end of the walk. Now we're just going to walk up here to the White Hart. The Crown and Falcon Pub. Established circa 1530. Hiya! <laughs> You're right. Great to meet Casper back there who was riding his bike from uh, Cambridge to London and just, ah, oh, watch all your videos. Got off his bike, made a lovely chat. It's always nice. You never know what's going to happen. Here I am, a little village called Pucheridge in Hertfordshire. Journey's end at the White Hart in Puckeridge. Good place to end a walk. What a great walk that was. Thoroughly enjoyed that. It took us so long. It's like quarter past four. I met Simon at where? At 11. We drove out to start. I think we started at 11.30 more or less. And it's now quarter past four. So it's, it's taken us nearly, it's taken us five hours pretty much to walk five miles. A mile, slowest walk I think I've ever done. But it was great. It was really good fun. And what a great project, A10 Live. A10 Live. If this is ever in the public domain, I'll put some links below. Um, but either way, what a wonderful project. And I'm, I'm handing over now to Simon Munnery, who's going to walk the next section, <laughs> section eight. Mm -hmm.